in this episode, what we are going to do is we are going to make a coin. So before I make the coin, uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to put on my screen uh, the coin indicator. So I'm going to click add a new object and it's not going to be a sprite or a tiled sprite. This time it's going to be a text uh, because I want it to say coin. So I'm going to call this object, object text, and I'm going to choose size 20. Um, but if you want to make it bigger or smaller, you could do that there. And you could also change the font and uh, the boldness. But I'm going to put here something like um, coins or coins collected, whatever it is that you wanted to display. I'll just put uh, coins because that's what the Mario game has. And I'll put a, um, the beginning number, which is zero. We haven't collected any coins yet. So the text is going to say coins uh, or coin zero, uh, whatever you want to put. So I'm going to put it in my game and I just drag it to the screen. And uh, there you go. You can see it says coin zero. And I'm going to hit play. And you're going to see there's a slight problem. And the problem, uh, at first you think, no, it looks great. I can see my coin indicator, it says coins uh, zero. But the problem comes as I move, the coins are part of the background and the camera is not gonna follow, uh, follows Mario, not the background. And so there's an easy work around it. And what we're going to do is we're gonna add a layer. And a layer is like a piece of cellophane. Um, so think of it as being a clear, a uh, sheet of paper that you can see through and we're going to put the coins on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer and we do that at the bottom here where it says add a layer. Uh, a student said they didn't have this showing so I'll close this off and show you if, if you don't see where it says add a layer you would click up at the top here uh, which is the um, layer panel. So I would click here uh, and then the layer panel opens up. So now you can see the add a layer uh, button. And so we're going to add a layer. I'm going to call the layer, um, I'm going to give it a name. And so when I hit plus, it just says layer, but I'm going to give it a name and I might call it something like heads up display or even display underscore layer. One of the things to always remind uh, people that are learning to program is when you name things, don't use uh, spaces uh, because it may think that that's a, a different um, item. Also try to avoid using things like uh, the minus sign because it might, or the plus sign because it might think you're doing uh, some sort of calculation and even numbers, um, try to use them uh, definitely as the last item uh, or the last couple of items but typically try to avoid those. So what I do is I called mine display underscore layer and some people will use capitalization. Okay, so now I've got a layer called display layer. And what I'm going to do is uh, if I click on the text object, you'll see in the properties panel, um, and again, if you don't have the properties panel, you can uh, get it from the top menu. But in the properties panel, it says, that an object called object text is in a layer called base layer. And you can tell it's selected because it's got the handles. Uh, and of course, it shows the properties of that item. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on this base layer. And what this base layer is, is this base layer is going to be a sheet of paper that's always going to be on top of the screen. So even though the background layer, um, sorry, uh, <laughs> display layer is what I meant to say. Um, the base layer, the background layer, is going to follow Mario. So as the screen moves, um, the background will move, but this base layer will still stay stuck in front of the screen. Let me show you. So I click on this and I tell it to be on the display layer. So now I have my uh, object text and it's going to display in the display layer. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, raise the Z order. 
And what the Z order is how deep something is. And so the higher the Z order number, the um, closer to the front of the screen it is. And so I want to make this number, maybe I'll do it randomly, a number like 20. So it's going to be 20 layers above everything else in the game. So it's definitely on top. And because it's on a layer called the um, display layer that I made, and the display layer doesn't have a camera, it's going to just be stuck on the display, um, it's going to work. And let me just hit play so that you can see how it works. And so now when I run my game, uh, you'll see coins is there, and it's going to just keep following Mario. And eventually I would move coins a little higher and uh, a little more to the left perhaps, um, just for looks, but uh, you can see it right there. Okay, now I want to make a coin object. So to get started with the coin object, I'm going to click plus and make a new sprite. Uh, I'll call it object coin. And again, I need to make things uh, unique. A lot of students just type in coin and I'll tell you why not to just type in coin. I'm going to call it object coin uh, or something like that. I'm going to click plus to add an animation and then I'm going to edit with Piskel because um, I have already created a Piskel of this uh, that I can open up and I did this the other day so I can browse and I've got in my assignments Game Maker Mario I've got a Piskel of a coin so I'm going to open that one uh, up and so here is the animation um, this animation if I click on preview you'll see it, it oh actually uh, you didn't uh, it only played once uh, we need to click on loop here to make it uh, be animated so I click on loop and now I click uh, play and you'll see it spins but it spins quite fast and one of the great things that we can do here is I can change there's a little uh, stopwatch up here and this can change the speed of your animation so right now each frame is going to jump to the next frame uh, at 0 0.08 of a second, uh, which is pretty fast. If I double it, uh, I'll make it, um, I'll just click the up arrow to make the number a lot bigger, uh, maybe, uh, well, even more than double. How about uh, uh, 20 uh, one hundredths of a second? It's going to be much slower. Now when I hit play, you'll see it spins much slower, and I think that's a better animation effect for this particular um, uh, animation. So I call it object coin, I add the animation, and now I'm going to do some coding. So let's go to the code uh, window and see what we've got. Remember last time I organized things in groups by clicking on this and going group? Uh, and the reason I do that, I'm going to make a group today called coin, and the reason I do it is because I've got lots of codes here, and you'd see quickly we're going to run out of room on our screen and so by making these groups that are collapsible I can add lots of code and only use a little bit of the screen. So what code do I want to add? Uh, let's click add an event and again I'm going to put it as part of group coin so I'm going to indent it and so let's say what is the event condition. The event condition is going to be a collision. So I'm going to type in the word collision and see what options I have. And it says uh, collision for objects, for all objects. Great. Sounds good. So what is a collision going to be? Well, it's going to be object Mario is going to have a collision with object coin. Um, an option here, we're not going to use it, is to make sure that it completely overlaps. I'm just going to keep it at the default, which is no. Uh, it just has to touch, so it just has to be a collision. But sometimes um, you might make a game where it has to overlap. Uh, okay, so I've got Mario is in collision with coin. What I want to have happen? Well, I want the coin to be deleted. So I type in coin and I type delete. Great. So I'm going to delete the coin. Um, some other things, so that would work, and if I press play, you'd see Mario would collect the coins. If I had a sound effect, I might want to play a sound effect of the coin, but I'm not going to do that just uh, today to make the video short. The other thing I want to do is I need to update my coin counter. 
Well, previously we've learned how to use variables, not in this uh, series, not with GDevelop, but in other things we've learned to make variables. Variables are very important. They can keep track of data, they can update da data, and they can sort of um, make decisions on that data. So what we're going to do is I want to go here and make a variable. Different versions of GDevelop uh, have some better use of variables, uh, but I'm going to go to the basic here uh, because even the oldest uh, versions uh, do it this way as well. So if you click in the top corner uh, where it says the project manager, and that's just up here. Uh, so I'm going to click on this little thing up here. And what I'm going to do is when I click on it, I can see the game settings. And one of the things in the game settings is a global variable. And what a global variable means is a variable that works everywhere. If you watched my tutorials where I've had a game controller, we've made global variables in game controller so that we can always access those variables. So I'm going to do the same thing in uh, GDevelop and I'm going to select global variable. So I click global variable and then as you can guess, I'm going to go add. So what is the name of the variable? Um, it might be something like num uh, coins, or I might even just keep it simple for today and just call it coins. Notice it's all lowercase. So this is why I was saying not to name the coin object as object coin, uh, because I want to um, call a variable coins. And if I've got two things that are named the same, again, the computer will be confused. So I'm going to call it coins. C-O-I-N-S, coins. And I'm going to give it a value here because when the game starts, uh, its value is going to be the number zero. So I've got zero coins, but it's a variable that now exists. Okay, let's go back to my coding. So in my coding, if I hit the coin, we're going to um, delete the object, but we're going to increase the variable. So I'm going to type in variable. And when I type in variable, you'll see, obviously, there's a lot of things we can do with variables. Um, but this is a global variable. And what I want to do is I want to change the value of the global variable. I want to add one to that uh, global variable. So you'll see at the bottom of my list, uh, it says value of a global variable. That's the one I want to do uh, today. So when I click on it, fortunately, it lists all the global variables that are, there are. And if you don't see anything, well, you must have done something wrong. You must not have set up your global variable. Um, so I did, and my global variable is called coins. So I can just click on it, and it's going to place it where it says variable. The operator, I want to add. How much do I want to add? Well, we collected one coin, so I want to add a value of Great. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to update my text um, object because I want it not to say coins, zero. I want it to say coins and the number of coins. In this case, I've got one or when I get another one, it'll say two and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here where it says add action and I'm going to add to object text I want to modify the text. So I'm going to select object text, uh, which is coins colon zero, and I want to modify it. So I click modify, and I want to set it to display something different. And what I want to set it to display is a string, and a string is always in quotation mark. So a string is a bunch of uh, characters things you can type on a keyboard. So I put quotation marks and I type in C-O-I-N-S or I might type uh, number of coins, whatever you had in your text display. And so the string I had in mind, I believe, was um, coins and then I think I put a space and a colon um, and I'll put another space here. Uh, so I wanted to display the string of the letters C-O-I-N-S, uh, space, a colon, and a space. So I wanted to display that, plus 
So I'll put the plus sign. I also want it to display the string value of coins. And so I type in here uh, a variable and you'll see global variable string is an option. Sounds about right. So I want to put my global variable and I want to turn it into a string because you're going to add it to this string of characters. So it's a variable, uh, global variable string. And unfortunately this time, I, uh, it doesn't list the global variables. In this version at least it doesn't. So I actually have to type in and perfectly type in exactly what I called my global variable. So I called it C-O-I-N-S and there you go. I'm going to press OK. So uh, these are the things I want to do. And in fact, I'm going to change the order. I'm going to delete uh, the um, sprite of the coin last. So first thing I want to do, change the variable coins. I want to add one to it. I want to change the text uh, of the coins um, to be coins and the variable coins. And then I'm going to delete the object of the coin. Great. Let me um, go to my room here and I'm going to add a couple of coins just real quick. And I think I said I was going to make this higher. I can't remember. Let me just, I'll put some coins uh, all around uh, just randomly here that I can collect. And I'm going to hit play and hopefully everything's going to work well. And you'll see uh, what's going to happen. Coins moves at the same time. Terrific. And as I collect a coin, it's going to um, display the proper number of coins. Great. Last thing I want to show you, um, you can finish the video now if uh, you're done, but I had a student uh, yesterday that made a mistake and the screen went black and they didn't know what they did. So I'm just going to make a mistake here and uh, show you that if you make a coding mistake, unfortunately, the debug engine is not so good that it tells you where your mistake is. So let me just add another condition here. I'm going to add something. I'm going to say uh, object brick uh, um, collision um, no, object with object Mario collision with object brick. Oops. So Mario collides with a brick. And I just want to do something that's going to be an error. I want to set. Uh, the text, I'll modify it, and I'll leave this and I'll just put a value of one. Uh, notice it's missing some things. There's an error. So it's easy to see there's an error, but if I hit play, uh, look at what happens to the screen. It just, no, oh, well, it, it didn't actually. Uh, but sometimes if you get an error, it just won't run things. And so if you're getting a black screen, what I would suggest you do to try to debug it is just delete um, the most recent things you added and just re-add them because chances are you made a mistake somewhere and that's why it's black and it doesn't give you an error. So I just wanted to demonstrate that. Great. Thanks for watching. A bit of a long video, um, but uh, went through lots of important things in making coins. Really is fairly easy. We made a text object. We made a layer called display layer. And then we ensured that we were on the display layer and that way the um, coins is, uh, doesn't move. I then made an object coin and we created a global variable. We had a collision with the coin. We changed the global variable by adding one. We changed the text and then we deleted that. If you want, add a sound effect here too. That would be great. But that's it for today.